Right, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Nikki Ingham, HPMA Executive Director, um, my boss, if you like, when it comes to HPMA. Delighted to welcome you, Nikki, um, and you're going to talk to us about our people profession into the future. So very much a theme of today, and you're going to take it forward. Thank you. Thank Annesley, and I think Annesley is doing a wonderful job chairing today because I know how difficult it can be, particularly on a, a platform such as this. Uh, so it's a real uh, pleasure um, to be here today. And as I said in the chat earlier on, um, just listening to just listening to there to Elizabeth, true inspiration, a real role model uh, for our profession. And it's really humbling to sit here and think that I'm the exec director of this wonderful, wonderful charity that is here to support each and every one of you that are here today and those of us that can't be here um, today. I just want to take a, a moment to reflect before I move on to some slides, uh, just in respect of the privilege that we have as uh, people professionals. Um, and, you know, how would it be if we weren't around, particularly during COVID, but before that, what would we do without people professionals? How would the NHS function without us doing what we do? It's very simple, it wouldn't function. And I think although COVID has been challenging, it's brought some real opportunities for the profession, which I'm going to uh, talk through. Um, so I'm going to talk through our strategic direction. This has been um, in development for some time now. People will remember at the last face to face conference we had, we started sharing some of the themes as to what we wanted to work on. We agreed our values. But then COVID hit and we didn't get to launch it. Please be assured that I've been working tirelessly with my colleagues behind the scenes, still working on the themes that we agreed. But we are refreshing the strategy currently and it will be launched in the spring uh, next year. So I just want to go over sort of what the direction of travel that we're currently working in. So now I'm going to test the technology and see if I can share the slides. So hopefully you can see them. Uh, which is hopeful. Um, so let me uh, work through. So I have the privilege, the utmost privilege to be the exec director for HPMA. Um, it's the best job I've ever had uh, because it's giving something back to you, each and every one of you, my colleagues who work tirelessly every day in the profession. Um, and that's really important to me. So when listening to Elizabeth, my job as a director was to develop my team. That's what I was about. So to be able to do that as a job uh, with this charity is amazing. So thank you to Dean and others who appointed me in this role because it's just the best job ever. OK, now then let's see if we can. So as I said, uh, reflecting on if we weren't here as people professionals, what would it be like? It would be chaotic. And I, I know at times it's felt chaotic in the service during COVID. But we are here as HPMA, Healthcare People Management Association, for you, for each and every one of you. So if you work at whatever level within the workforce, people, cultural directorate, you are a member of HPMA. So we want to deliver our strategy with you and for you, most of all. So this um, for me visualizes how, you know, Dean mentioned at the beginning of today around the, there has been really um, difficult, challenging times for us as a profession and personally in our personal lives that have impacted from COVID. However, I think we have seen the real value that the people profession have at the table, what difference we can make, how creative we can be, and how we can support colleagues through uh, what has been an unprecedented time. However, I don't think we always look after ourselves very well, and that's a theme we've talked about throughout the day. Uh, and HPMA are here to help support you to be the best you can be, to have the latest impact, the latest evidence, the latest thought leadership pieces, pl safe places with which to share things that you're feeling. And we're developing our products all the time, which I'll, I'll talk through so that you're aware of those. So never has it been, and I think on the, the pictorial um, slide that Carrie is doing, this is our time. This is really our time to step onto our rightful place at centre stage. We need to grab it with every, with both hands. And we have got this. We need to really just grab it and really shout from the rooftops about what difference we are making as 
people, professionals at every level across the UK. So just to, obviously we are um, UK wide. We have now, uh, we used to have 13 branches. We now have 11. We've had some mergers, uh, particularly in London, South Central, South East, which has been a great development for our academy. Um, but again, we work tirelessly through the vice presidents who, again, I would like to thank for everything you do for the charity, because without you, we wouldn't be doing some of the great work that we're doing. So again, UK wide, so we've got a lot to think about. I'm trying to work these slides. OK, so we've heard this morning from um, Pranar and from uh, Rogine about the NHS uh, futures review uh, that, again, I shared in the chat in terms of that report. There is also a healthier Wales strategy in terms of the health and social care that they're working with in Northern Ireland. There's the delivering for our people health again, health and social care strategy. And then, as David mentioned in his section, there is a, a watch this space because there is a new um, HR, uh, sorry, workforce strategy uh, about to be launched in Scotland, which, again, we need to make sure our offer as a charity is, is building and supporting each and every one of those strategic directions. So our strategy um, has five key, uh, we call them squads. We may well change that in the next iteration, but they're called squads at the moment. So five key pillars in which we're working through. So the first one is developing, which is really, well, I suppose, what HPMA is renowned for um, as a charity um, in terms of what we deliver. So we deliver a significant amount and we've developed that offer significantly over the last 18 months. And watch this space because we're excited for the future direction, working with Rogine and her team, but also with Wales, with Scotland and Northern Ireland in terms of what our core offer may be going forward. So this is about us making sure that we're the natural home for development of people professionals across UK healthcare. And obviously, we started really well with that in terms of working collaboratively with our colleagues at NHS England and Improvement. The next squad is um, engaging. So this is about communications. So we're very good at engaging with who we traditionally call the HR profession. But let's be honest, the workforce portfolio is so wide and diverse that it's not just about HR, it's not just about OD, it's about wellbeing, it's about payroll, it's about workforce transformation, it's about EDI. It's the whole diversity of that portfolio that we need to be delivering for. So we've worked hard on developing our uh, communications and engagement um, in the last sort of 18 months. We've got our newsletter, uh, we do direct mails, um, and we're working uh, more on social media to make our presence again more um, visible. So again, we want to be you know, the place that people go to. So both Dean, myself and others do influence what's happening across CIPD. Obviously, we were very much involved in the futures review and other things to make sure that we are proactively supporting and developing and influencing policy on a national basis. Next area is around sharing. So this is why we have the event like we've got today and tomorrow. How do we share the a magnificent practice across all of our organizations so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel? You can see what other people are doing. You may get frustrated in that when you look at the award, you think, well, we started doing that 10 years ago. So why didn't we put in for the award? Those types of things, because we're all doing amazing work that we under, underestimate. And people will know me for my hashtag, be proud, shout loud. Let's really shout from the rooftops about the amazing work that we're doing. Two particular things I want to pick up on this slide is around our HPMA hub, which, again, similar to what Rajin was talking about, a repository of good practice. That's where we put thought leadership articles, policies. Uh, you can do discussions on particular topics. So, again, I'd urge people, if you haven't registered for that, that you go and register on our website for that. The other is the resource hub, which has been developed by our colleagues in London Academy. Uh, which is an excellent and it's open for all members, not just in London, in terms of providing a career framework that links back to what Elizabeth was talking about. So, again, ambition there is to be sort of you know where people go for the latest practice, finding out what people are doing, what people are up to. Squad four is about managing talent. Uh, and again, this goes back to action three in the National Futures Review around making sure that our profession uh, is diverse. Um, and re reaches all aspects of our communities and populations. 
Uh, we did a piece of research that was quite a hard read and that we're not representative, particularly around our uh, BAME colleagues in the profession. So what do we do to support that? So again, working with uh, other stakeholders on developing talent across the whole stretch of the career framework from entry level to chief people officer beyond to chief exec, because we should all be chief execs, I think, but we're good people, people. So the, the final squad uh, is caring. So again, these are tough jobs. Um, having been a director myself, it can get lonely at times. Um, and it's hard sometimes to support your team when you're in a difficult position yourself. So we're here to reach out to support new people coming into the NHS from other sectors to be a listening ear. And um, we're currently starting to work on uh, a mentoring and coaching offer, again, in partnership with colleagues. Uh, and it's good that I got a couple of uh, nice messages to help with that. So that's really good. So we're working on how we can support people when they need it, either professionally or personally. Nearly there. So this is what we want to talk about. So when the first people remember, we did a piece of research with the University of Sheffield and our colleagues in CMP around employment relations in the NHS during COVID. Uh, watch this space because we're about to launch the phase two. So doing it again for the to see what's changed in the 18 months that we since we did the initial research. So we'll be putting links, sending you links through various means and me methods asking for people to be uh, interviewed, just to talk through experiences, we want to encourage your trade union colleagues to, to join in the, the debate and discussion to really understand what has changed, if anything, in the last sort of 12, 18 months. So that will be launched in the next couple of days. Then we're in conversations around the um, evaluation for the need and the impact of transformational culture uh, within health and social care. That's things like just learning culture. How do we do things differently? How do we approach things in a more restorative way? So again, we're, we're shaping that research at the moment. And then we reached out to um, the Society of Occupational Medicine, bearing in mind the significant impact on well-being uh, for our workforce during COVID. Is there any piece of research that would be helpful to do in partnership? So again, if you've got any ideas, anything you think we should be covering in that space, then please uh, let us know. So really exciting research happening uh, with the charity at the moment. And then this is just a really poor slide, really very poor slide. Uh, so this is just trying to illustrate some benefits um, of the membership. So we are growing our membership all the time. And what we want to make sure myself and Joe uh, and others at Chamberlain Dawn, um, we need to make sure that we are meeting what you want us to meet. So we've just been closed uh, the, earlier this week, a development needs analysis to understand what it is you're hungry for in terms of knowledge, skills, um, experiences so that we can look at our offer and see what we put on on a national level which we've done throughout COVID but also on a regional level through our branch networks so please follow us on uh, Twitter uh, you've been using Twitter very well today um, that's our number that's our website if you've never gone to onto our website please do it's it's very useful very user friendly and we want to just hear from you engage with you and just remember, we've got this. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Take it with both hands. So I don't know if I've gone over my time because I'm really passionate about this, but uh, over to you, Annesley. I'll stop sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you. If anyone's got any quick questions, we can we can squeeze those in if you want to put those in the Q&A. Just listening to you, Nikki, I, I know you've done a, a lot of work on the strategy, you and, you and colleagues. You've also done a lot of listening. What would you say is the, the sort of the, the strongest message, the, the most repeated message you've heard as you've been, been working with people and, and, and gathering their views? I think what I hear <clears throat> both in the work with HPMA, but it, with my other hat on, is the exhaustion of everybody in the service. Um, however, regardless of that uh, exhaustion, people are still willing to go the extra mile for their patients, for their service users, for carers. Um, and I, I think sometimes as workforce people, professionals, we forget that we are staff, that we need to be looking after ourselves. Mm. It's a bit the old adage, if you, you know, on an aeroplane, you put a, your own oxygen mask on first before you help others. We sometimes in the people profession and you know, speaking personally forget that. Um, but I think it's, you know, we're busy trying to put in place support for workforce. 
which is great, but you need to think about what support you need to put in for yourself as well. So again, it's what can we do at HPMA to support that, to keep the belief, to keep the hope in the profession, in their NHS alive. It's that type of thing. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. And I think I take the opportunity to say what, what great opportunities there are for people who want to get involved in the HPMA, the support you get from you, Dean, other vice presidents and, and colleagues, committee members is absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's a great community to, to be involved, to, to have an impact. You know, we've, we've been involved in, in strategy development um, for, for the national piece. So, you know, thank you. Um, you know, it's oh, a great forum. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.